Hello everyone, this is Uthers and welcome back to another episode of Planet Coaster. We're going to be doing something a little bit different than usual this time. Uh, usually, you know, we do the building process with live commentary and this time, uh, just with how much time this is taking to uh, construct and I felt like getting a lot of progress done, we're doing a little bit of a time lapse with me kind of talking over it and explaining kind of basically what is going on. So this was laying out the main road for a new section for shops and some restaurant kind of tavern area and here we're just laying down some some wooden floors of different structures trying to lay out our general building uh, shapes and where that's going to occupy and then inside here on this road what I want to do is try and put a ride in here so people can uh, be drawn into this area and then also and you know of course enjoy the area uh, for, for more than just one reason, which is just food and drink. So we settled on this Roctopus kind of uh, ride, and uh, you know, it, it, it's, ju it's just something that fit the, the area, um, and plus an octopus being a, an ocean-dwelling creature, we are going to be able to kind of match the theme a little bit by using that. Uh, a little bit of a short cue here, because really, it, it's not really an important ride to me. It's just uh, something different. Doing a bit of landscaping to try and uh, get a good feeling of the courtyard, kind of plaza-esque area that we're kind of doing here. Sinking trees kind of mostly into the way of the ground is a really good trick to do uh, to try and get the different colored bushes, shrubbery, uh, small groupings of flowers rather than uh, the large full uh, shrubbery that you're going to get stuck with and now we're gonna get started working on the first building now this first building this one uh, in my head I was thinking a little bit like a tavern um, and so we're gonna have the side deck to the right and it's going to have some tables and chairs now there's no tables and chairs in the game just yet and so what essentially what I'm having to do is uh, sink some white columns Mostly, most of the way down, and then surround them with barrels. Uh, that seems to be the common solution that people are coming up with right now. Some people will use the uh, circle columns. Um, I'm going to be using the square ones. I did try these chimneys as, as a test to see if that might look right, but I decided to use these square pirate columns. As uh, at least for me, I like a good square table. This is a nice clean look, in my opinion. And then we're just going to grab the barrels and sink them into the ground and basically call them chairs. Since that's something that we don't really have just yet, though I am excited for a lot more assets here in the future. It's going to be a kind of a tarp kind of roofing over the porch. And then we're going to inset the food uh, stall inside the building. I'm trying my best to line up kind of floor pieces here to make it look like you can actually walk around on these items and the people would actually traverse them. We're gonna put a bathroom in here as well because of course if you want to eat some food you're gonna have to find a way to get rid of it and that is in my experience this is the best thing to have. Uh, at this point as well we're gonna put some tables inside and uh, put some chairs for them just in case you know there's not enough seating just on the outside only so this is a nice kind of thing to do this is really the only building in this episode that i do a, a major interior like this and i don't know why but i think i think it was just mainly for testing purposes because doing kind of interior work at this point in time really doesn't really serve a major purpose but hey the more you learn, the, the more you're going to be able to take that into your next build. So we're going to go ahead and put up the outer wall. And the first story is going to be these kind of castle bricks, uh, fort bricks, however you want to think they are. And uh, the second story is going to be this plaster. And then the roof trim is going to be just this solid kind of uh, wooden roofing. Now, there's not a lot of roof variants to go into, sadly. Uh, not, at least not yet. You can either do two two different colors of like flat roofing or you can have uh, basically two different variants for a peaked roof 
and even then they, they're sloped a little bit different. And because of uh, putting this railing here, which is essentially just a balcony shoved in uh, and, and merged into the floor, it's going to be poking through the ceiling on the interior, which is something that uh, I used to hang lights off of, um, just so it feels like they have a purpose, other than just a clipping air. And then we'll just throw on some windows here, um, some nice open shuttered kind of variants. And you can inset the balconies, on, in this case, to kind of create a wooden trim in certain areas, if that's something you want to do as well. It's really just trying to find out what looks right merged together to create a detail that we don't have a default block for. And then as more blocks are kind of added to be used, people are going to be using them in different in more ingenious ways. And we're going to be using uh, these blocks here to create a little bit of an overhang and uh, using these stones to kind of make it look a little bit more formal in general. Up here, we're gonna put some awnings and uh, little knickknacks such as like a tavern sign and also the grog sign because this is uh, a place of food and drink. Though, they can't buy drink here. Oh well, surprise, surprise. So, a little bit more knickknacks and then at this point I kind of realized, well, I built this giant structure, right? And it looks good on itself, but really um, it's a bit of a mistake to work one structure at a time. You kind of want to work multiple structures at once. That way you can kind of keep the theme a little bit more uniform, consistent throughout. And so, in my opinion, I kind of missed that spot up here. But we'll just go ahead and add this overhang. And then uh, this porch ends up being removed because it's part of another structure. So I just stopped working on it. This other one, this one is going to be, if I remember correctly, the drink stall, and then the blue first floor here, this one's going to be a hat stall. Um, you, you're really trying to mix up the colors, trying to bring some variation with the buildings. That's something uh, that's gonna be very important here in the future, so. And, you know, the, the more variations you're, you're able to do and test out, the more comfortable you're gonna be building pretty much anything in this game. As you can see, I noticed that uh, that building was going to clip a little weird. So I'm trying to find a way to merge these two styles together. And then I end up just cutting it short, uh, having to replace a wall there. And I think we're going to end up settling with putting a spire in that little spot to uh, help join the two buildings. And here we're just going to block in the hat stall. It's going to be a rather kind of white upper floor with a blue roof and we're gonna try and make it look a little colonial that's, that's kind of the the constant theme through all these kind of colonial Caribbean-esque um, with the limited tile set that we have that's really all I can shoot for uh, I know some people are starting to work on some Japanese tile sets using the white and trying to throw a lot of wooden trim around it now here, this ended up being scrapped, but what I'm essentially doing is I want pathways eventually up through and around the valley, and we're gonna be putting stalls and things like that, just more buildings in general. And so trying to use the road tool without being able to edit the terrain is a little bit of a chore. And really, once we have a proper terrain editor, and some type of functionality like that, this will be much easier. In fact, you'll notice even on the main road, kind of around where our new right is, we, we have a lot of grass clipping to one side, which is a little bit of a nuisance, uh, as there's nothing I can really do about it right now. But yeah, there, there is a hat shop up there that I do want to connect up to at some point. I just need to find a good way to incorporate a little road to do so. And this, this whole thing sadly gets scrapped because really I just don't think it looks good. It doesn't flow any anywhere as nice as anything else. So we're just going to go ahead and continue work on this new small uh, bell tower that's going to go right here to try and take up some space, add some more depth and height variation to the overall facade on um, the main street here. Now. Generally, what you want to do is create a whole bunch of layers and, and different height maps in, in essence 
and I wanted to try and put a balcony there, but this ended up being like, it's just too long of a surface. So after putting those pillars and everything down, I didn't like it, so we just went straight back with a normal wooden balcony. Just enough to kind of make a nice line at that point. We put some wooden balusters and some stone just to keep some type of theme with the plaster and edit the bell tower a little bit more. At this point, I didn't know it was gonna be a bell tower. Um, I thought it was gonna be something else because I kind of forgot there was a bell to even use as a bell tower. I thought it was just gonna be a defensive tower and, and just look like that. And then we end up finding one and uh, positioning it at the top there. So this building, um, the drink shop, it's, it's a full stucco building, which I don't really suggest anyone to do. Um, having this constant same wall type throughout the whole height of the building can look pretty bad, especially if you do it wrong. Um, I think I did okay, but it's, it's really probably not my favorite building. I had to throw in a bunch of textures onto the wall just so it wouldn't be this plain, boring, flat surface and so you'll, you'll be seeing a lot of woodwork just trying to break up the surface and make it interesting um, because really it's, it's a pretty dull looking kind of apartment building almost like effect maybe it, it almost looks like it belongs in Venice a little bit because of the arches on the bottom and then just straight wall up uh, at that point I realized the road was accidentally kind of uh, deleted by the roller coaster and just a flood of people were standing there. It was about like 200 people. Half the people in our park were just stuck and so I decided to actually free them and uh, they immediately left because they hated me. So here I'm, I'm trying to bring layers to this giant flat surface I'm trying to uh, use this different kind of piece to pop out a section of wall in the middle as a, a main kind of eye catcher as we have this giant flat square and then we'll just bring up the wooden balusters and at that point because they're pick poking up through the roof I decide oh we can just hang some flags on here and make it look like it actually belongs so we'll, we'll be throwing in a lot of this little woodwork and trim um, and which draws of course focus to when things are off center doing stuff like this because it really just points to uh, things like that. There's a lot more woodwork going in here and then this upper trim area for this flat section of roof because I didn't want it to come to a straight point. Everything's kind of having a, a barn style roof at the moment which uh, you know isn't too bad. Here trying to decide what kind of windows to throw on this little tower here. Uh, there wasn't a round window large enough, so what I did was take the two halves and essentially split them up with a little gap. Uh, and from a distance, it looks like one big round window, but once you get it up close, it's uh, obvious that it's just two separate windows with a small gap. Now, using signs, you can occasionally find one to fit in an area to color a wall, so that's what I did there. And then, realizing that this lower section is so blue, I didn't like it that much, and so what I'm trying to do is cover up a lot of the blue. I'm fine with a little bit of it, but really, you, you really want just, just a smidgen of color that different than the rest. We do have some interior details here uh, for the drinks. Most of these, these places will have a, a shop around a corner on the interior for me. Because what I want to see is I want to see the, the, the people actually walk inside all the way into the building and disappear, in essence. Um, because to me, that, that kind of sells that, you know, the inside is bigger than it looks from the outside. Uh, at least from a distance, you can see people coming and going into buildings. And of course, riding our little ride down there. And we're going to throw in some, some basic kind of foliage here. I uh, think some additional pathing so people can get around a little bit easier. Uh, that bend was not quite smooth, so we ended up editing that and cutting it down a little bit. And at this point, I believe we're going to decorate around the deck to try and bring some uh, nice foliage, 
so people can sit there and enjoy that. And then after a little bit of a skip, this is currently what everything looks like. So these are some slow pans to kind of get a feeling of where we are at. Um, it turned out really well. I sunk in some golden arches to try and make a little bit of a divide between the foliage and our main path. And, you know, I'm, I'm fairly happy with this uh, facade in general. So, I hope you guys are. Alright everyone, I hope you all enjoyed the overview of this area pretty much getting built up and all that we accomplished this episode. Thank you guys so much for watching. And if you guys enjoyed the content, feel free to subscribe to my channel for more creative goodness. Go ahead and hit that like button down below, and I'll see you guys next time in some Planet Coaster.